Slingers. We have finally passed the first flight inspection. Uh, so, once again, uh, Happy New Year. Hope uh, everyone had a good break over the Christmas break. And um, thought I'll put another update out before we get to the test flying fa phase. So, before the end of last year, we had a couple of issues to sort out. There was uh, a leak developed on the left fuel tank. Uh, luckily, it was close to the wing route, so I could just take off the inspection hatch with the fuel center on it and apply more sealant from the inside. Uh, thankfully, that, that was it, uh, and that resolved the issue. So uh, that got fixed, and then it was uh, pretty much that was the kind of the only worry bead uh, when it came to the final inspection. Uh, the final inspection, the process is essentially going through the whole build, every single nut and bolt, uh, make sure it's done to as per the build manual. If there are any deviations to the actual in build instructions, you need to justify that by either getting an authorization from the factory or you'll have to redo it to the way that it's, it's said in the build manuals. Now, it's quite tricky to do that because the build manuals keep updating. There are new versions pretty much every other week. Um, so you've got to try and nail down your build to a particular uh, build manual um, uh, revision number and try and keep it that way. Uh, for me there were a couple of uh, changes, the Earthex battery and the, uh, the Torsten CS8 grips. Uh, both of them uh, I didn't have to put a mod application because both the factory confirmed uh, they can uh, provide this as an optional extra. So I uh, got confirmation letters from the factory so that I could put those in without any mods. Um, some of these, for example, the, the baffle for that intercooler, ideally you could you know, just rivet that on, uh, but again, it doesn't show that uh, that way in the build manual. Um, we looked up the demonstrator TSI and it's held on with a cable tie, so we've had to do the same. Uh, the other one for the, the air, air filter is not bad, it's, 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 a whole, it's a Jubilee clamp kind of thing, so that's pretty robust, uh, it will stay. But again, we will inspect all these things after uh, after the first flight at many stages, so uh, we should be all right. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then pretty much you have to open up all the inspection hatches for the inspector to go through. Pretty much every single nut and bolt is checked. Um, in the meantime, the notification for the counterweight, uh, the elevator counterweight removal came through, uh, and this is a mandatory change for the EUK uh, because of uh, the LAA requirements. So. Uh, so that got done, um, that's about a kilo and a half that came off from the rear which kind of adds another five kilo into the package compartment uh, and still stay within the, the C aft CFG limits. Um, a few other changes again during the final inspection uh, to comply with the UK CAA and LAA requirements. So uh, the, uh, the placards uh, or the warnings are quite different to what's provided in the kit that needs to meet the requirements so I had to change all of that printed them, printed new ones out and stuck them on. Um, I think the, the special one is the last one for the autopilot. Uh, no engagement um, below a thousand feet uh, is one of the things that you have to um, be listed on, on here. Again, when you go through the inspection check sheets, you will identify these things. Um, um, the other key aspect was the control surface deflections. Um, we had to make sure that we met uh, what was described in the POH as the limits for them. The aileron deflections, rudder deflections and um, elevator deflections etc. Uh, with the counterweight removal the trim tab adjustment also have slightly changed the range of movement for the trim tab. So that also got adjusted and uh, updated uh, and basically you have to record all these changes uh, because now now it's no longer a build project it's a finished aircraft so any changes have to be um, recorded in a worksheet so there's a lot of paperwork uh, trying to get everything uh, nailed down the uh, it was quite tricky to get the aileron deflections uh, spot on as per the POH uh, the rudder however even though the POH says uh, plus or minus two degrees you have a lot more deflection into the starboard side so again had to get confirmation from the factory that they allow up to plus 10 um, deflection on the starboard side so it's basically a minimum deflection you need uh, the maximum they have increased that limit so i think pretty all, pretty much all slings are built uh, to that level um, and so i mean all this thing all these things took uh, quite a lot of back and forth with the factory and um, a few minor adjustments so 
Well, finally there, the whole thing's been signed off, we submitted the paperwork to the LAA and are now waiting the permit application for, for test flying. Um, we reckon about uh, 10 hours of initial test flying should be able to enough um, to gather all the data that needs to be then submitted at the end of that test flight phase. Um, I mean the spats will be removed for the first flight, I just got to add that wing trim, uh, the fiberglass trim that goes between the wing and the, uh, the fuselage. Uh, that needs to be put on and towards the end of the test flight phase we will put the spats back on before we do the the final cruise speeds and uh, the high, uh, the max speed uh, things and all that so but we're nearly there uh, really excited for this the next phase of things uh, uh, hopefully the runway condition uh, here at top farm stays and um, uh, yeah hopefully uh, the paperwork comes through quite quickly um, i think i'm um, there's a few sling TSIs due to be finished this year, so...